Welcome back to Midnight News. As you are now well aware, there is a worldwide epidemic that has shaken humankind since the end of last year. The Center for Disease Control recently went on record saying that more than 9,000 people have died solely from the virus. Bernie Sanders, who is easily the most renowned confidence trickster of our time, blames President Donald Trump for every single death related to the virus. This is a president who was and still is at war with science, with doctors, with the researchers who are trying to help us combat this disease. This is a president who himself has held rallies, indoor rallies, where people were not wearing masks, where there was no social distancing. So to a very significant degree, I think it is fair to say that Trump doesn't give me any pleasure to say this, is in fact responsible for the deaths of many, many thousands of Americans and disproportionately Latinos. Scientists grow concerned that they are running out of monkeys to test vaccines on. Animal rights activists have been silent on the issue. According to Dr. Skip Bohm, we all hope that there is a day when we don't have to use animals in research, but right now, not all human beings are going to submit for an examination where they get regular x-rays, regular CT analysis, or blood analysis. Members of the medical community have further discussed growing animal habitats where they can allow wildlife to flourish until they need test subjects. In other news, experts are shocked to discover that wearing masks will give people immunity to COVID-19. Scientists say that all of the world's smart people agree that wearing the muzzle will make the situation go away. Dr. Julian Chang, Honorary Associate Professor of the Respiratory Sciences at the University of Leicester, had this to say. However, it is true that the proportion of asymptomatic infection being increased by masking might increase the proportion of the population who achieve at least a short-term immunity to the virus while we await a vaccine. Experts and authority figures agree that if you wear the muzzle, all of this will go away. In other news, settled science has settled the debate. Will wearing a mask help the fight against COVID-19? Scientists say that mutations might be leading to the virus mutating to bypass masks and hand washing. From the New York Post, a new COVID-19 mutation appears to be even more contagious according to a study, and experts say it could be a response by the virus to defeat masks and other social distancing efforts. Scientists in a paper published Wednesday identified a new strain of the virus, which accounted for 99.9% .9 of cases during the second wave in Houston, Texas. David Morins, a virologist at the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, had this to say. Wearing masks, washing our hands, all of these things are barriers to transmissibility or contagion. But as the virus becomes more contagious, it statistically is better at getting around these barriers. Settled science can sometimes be confusing, and it can be difficult to determine what is real from what is clear propaganda. That's why every smart person appointed us, so you can know what it is that you're allowed to think. You don't have to be bothered with troublesome things like asking questions with answers you simply don't need to know. Take for example our next story, a man named William Cruz, who worked at the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, has been identified by the Daily Beast as a heretic. Mr. Cruz was managing editor at a website called Red State, and they had mocked settled facts mandated by health czar Dr. Anthony Fauci. The NIAID first learned of this matter this morning, and Mr. Cruz has informed us of his intention to retire. We have no further comments on this, as it is a personal matter. That was a statement that was provided by the spokesperson for the NIAID. The Daily Beast and CNN didn't stop there, as their commitment to outing thought criminals from their job isn't just their job, but their passion. This news corporation, well, these news corporations with millions at their disposal, will stop at nothing to make sure that people who ask the forbidden questions are shunned from society and have their means to feed their families and pay their bills revoked. The Daily Beast, CNN, and many others have called and sent emails to Mr. Cruz which have not been returned. Lachlan Marquet, the contributor to The Daily Beast, the brave journalist who outed this outlaw ideologue, had this to comment. It illustrates the extent to which the response to the pandemic has become deeply politicized even within the agencies at the front lines of fighting it. Cruz isn't just a civil servant anonymously disagreeing with his bosses online, he's actively undermining their work, even suggesting retribution against them. It is very important to remember what you can say and who you can criticize. Be sure to tune into your corporate sponsored news so you know what you can say and what you are allowed to think. God bless America.
In other news, the conversation on whether or not black lives actually matter continues as hordes of peaceful demonstrators surround a man's home. The man was of interest to the protesters after one of the thoughtful individuals within their group noticed a Trump banner on his porch. Protesters warned the wrong thinker that he is not welcome there and that he needed to get out. The man stood in his home with a firearm as protesters taunted him as to what was in store for him. The police soon arrived to arrest the man for scaring the demonstrators and agreed to allow the peaceful demonstrators to loot the man's home for his transgressions. The man is currently booked in jail until charges can be created and then brought against him. Protesters around the nation continue to remind regular people who just want to go on with their lives that Black Lives Matter. In Los Angeles, California, people who attempted to avoid community-sanctioned roadblocks were surrounded by peaceful demonstrators who attempted to pull the driver from their vehicle. Demonstrators on scene tried to make sense of the situation, not understanding how anyone would try to drive on the road when they said not to. Protesters have been granted muzzle immunity as well as diplomatic immunity, as mayors and governors have encouraged their associates to carry out their wishes. Meanwhile, if you try to defend yourself, media corporations will smear your name, make you unemployable, and subject to a worldwide 15 minutes of shame. If you try to avoid taking a beating by a gang of peaceful demonstrators, the politicized and compromised district attorney will throw everything they can at you to show the people on social justice Twitter that they are willing to play ball. Experts and authority figures on television remind Americans to demonstrate in the streets to bring awareness to black lives. You have been watching Midnight News.